All right, let's talk about the 21 laws of branding. This is going to be an important video for you to understand branding, personal branding, or business branding. And the more you apply this to your business, the more success and clarity you're going to have. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first law is the law of expansion. Brands become weaker as they expand. A good example of this is as you try to add more services to be able to make more money, people start to not know who you are and what you specialize in. You want to focus your brand on one category. Like my wife, for example, who I'm going to use throughout this video with her brand, Crunchy Cottage. She created a tribe and created a brand that focuses on one category, and that is immune support. And not just immune support, but for who? Who is her target client? And that is what we call crunchy moms. So crunchy cottage, one, appeals to crunchy moms, but two, to moms who care about their child or their own immune systems. This is a good example of being specific and being focused, which we're gonna talk more about here in some of these other laws. Law number two, the law of singularity. You need to develop a singular focus and grow your market category. So for example, going back to Crunchy Cottage, her category is Crunchy Moms, but even bigger than that is immune support products. So in the health category, she's focusing on the immune system. Ways that you can boost your immune system, increase your immune system, and help your immune system become the best that it possibly can. And so what she creates is products that surround that from detox baths to elderberry syrup to fire cider. There's multiple products that all focus on immune support. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on a singular category. The third law is the law of publicity. Not all publicity is bad publicity. You want to be the first in your field. So as far as I'm concerned, Crunchy Cottage, using that keyword crunchy, Whitney and Crunchy Cottage is the first of her category. And so she's able to create more publicity around what she's doing for Crunchy Moms. And she's created a lot of momentum on social media because there's not a lot of people out there talking about immune support and actually how to boost your immune system during pandemics and during difficult times and actually how to raise that naturally without using supplements uh, that are man-made with chemicals. So Crunchy Moms know who she is. She's built a huge following. And so she's been able to be the first in her field of doing that. With the law of publicity, not all publicity is bad publicity. So for example, the TV show Married with Children back in the late uh, 80s, early 90s was getting a lot of flack from women because it was all about chauvinism and people had a really huge fuss about that. And so they went onto the news and they started talking badly about the TV show Married with Children. And because of all that complaining, Married with Children became a hit TV show and made the mainstream media and became just a massive sensation across the country. And it was a hit because of the bad publicity. So sometimes negative publicity can actually work in your favor, but getting publicity of your brand and being the first inside of your micro niche is going to be really, really important for you. The fourth law is the law of advertising. And this goes similar to the law of publicity, but this is a little bit differently. In advertising, you need to defend your gains in the marketplace. What I like to consider your market share. The more market share you can take from your competitors, the more money you're going to make. And you can only do that by marketing and advertising. The people that spend the most amount of money on advertising are the ones that have the most amount of market share. You look at the Coca-Colas of the world and the Pepsis of the world and the Apples of the world and the Who's and the Netflix. The ones that are dominating are spending the most amount of money. My brother is a very good example of this. He has a home improvement company and he was able to take his home improvement company and started by spending thirty to forty thousand dollars a month his very first month. None of his competitors in our area were spending that kind of money. And because of that, he was able to scoop up a ton of the business because a lot of businesses during the beginning of the pandemic were cutting back on their advertising and cutting back on their worst for workforce. And he doubled down and spent more money than they were. And so because of that, when people were searching to get home improvements done on their houses during the pandemic, he was the top of the list. They were seeing him everywhere. And so you need to defend your gains, but also you need to be able to take market share from your competitors by spending money on advertising. You've got to think bigger there. And so one of the things you need to be thinking about is being motivated by being the best in your category. People have a natural 
a psychological reaction to if they see you everywhere and they see you at the top of the list all the time they're going to automatically think you're the best because you're spending the most amount of money and that's not necessarily true because there are people out there that do terrible work and spend a lot of money but it just goes to show you if you spend money on advertising even if you do terrible work you can still have a ton of business now your reputation and what that's going to look like on the back end is a completely different thing the fifth law of advertising is the law of the word what is the essence of your brand owning a word association so let's bring it back again one more time to crunchy cottage when you hear the word crunchy cottage if you're a woman especially a, a crunchy woman you're going to know exactly what that means cloth diapers natural ingredients natural detergents you're not using fake and artificial products and you're probably not going to let anybody put toxic poisonous vaccine type chemicals into a vaccine into your child's body you're just not going to have that type of mindset not that that's a bad thing but that's what crunchy moms are all about and so having that word crunchy in her name has given her a word association with her brand everybody knows what she stands for she's created what we call an archetype an archetype is the type of character that you are there's 12 different ones we don't have time for that today but we'll get into that in another video but this is a really important topic when she's on social media whether it's video written memes everything that she posts and everything that she talks about is about being crunchy she never has to deviate from that because that is the word that she owns the sixth law is the law of category we talked a little bit about category uh, in previous slides but this one is really important you want to promote the category and not just the product she's not promoting elderberry syrup she's promoting immune support she is the immune support queen. Everything that she produces is all about helping with your immune system. She has expanded a little bit without, uh, outside of that with the sleep aid that she has and the anxiety blend, but all of her other products focus completely on immune support, and that is the category that she wants to expand. And that's why she's willing and excited to work with her competitors that also work in the immune support field because we need to bring more awareness, they need to bring more awareness to the world about how important your immune system is and how you can improve it. It helps the whole industry as a whole, it helps more people, and that's really the outcome of a good brand is actually helping the industry and helping people. And so that's really what you wanna be doing and what you wanna be focusing on is helping people realize that immune support is incredibly important and however you do that whether it's with competitors on your own through advertising that is the really the big outcome that you want and just another example of this is a pizza place Domino's pizza is not as successful as it is because they make the best pizza in the world they don't make the best pizza in the world they make good pizza but they don't make the best pizza what Domino's pizza does is they bring pizza to your house that is, the, that is the category that they are. So you wanna really hone in on your category. They are a pizza delivery company. They are the people that are gonna bring the pizza right to your front doorstep for you. And that is why they're successful and why they've been able to rebrand as not just Domino's Pizza, but Domino's because now they can expand upon their category of food delivery. It's not just pizza delivery now, it's wings and pasta. There's all kinds of other things that they have. So you can grow your category and you by focusing in on it more and you can end up having more products to sell rather than just pizza. So I wanted to give you guys that as well. The seventh law is the law of fellowship. And I touched on this briefly, but this is really important. We have people that we've tried to collaborate with on Crunchy Cottage many, many times. And it's because my wife, you're gonna hear me say we a lot. I've helped her grow that brand, create that brand. And so we've put a lot of time and energy and there have been multiple people that we've been able to collaborate with to really grow her category, to be able to expand. And there are some people that just refuse to want to work with us, even though they're in the same category. Um, and I'm not going to mention names, but there's people out there that refuse to help because they just see us as competition. At the end of the day, helping people is what's most important. And if you're so worried about your competition that you're not willing to collaborate and have fellowship with them and figure out how you can make your industry better and how you can serve more people and help people get well, then that's shame on you because the law of fellowship is created to actually help more people. And that's what we're in business to do. It doesn't matter if some of the business goes to your competitors. If your industry grows by 50% because you're collaborating, everybody's going to make more money, including you. So this scarcity mindset is really an unhealthy mindset to have in your branding. You need to be thinking from an abundance mindset and how you can collaborate and help other people and expand your industry, expand your category to help reach more people and impact more people. The eighth law, and this is my lucky number, is the law of credentials. Credentials and quality. Credentials is something where you need to be using social proof. So reviews, 
video testimonials, written testimonials, recommendation letters, recommendations on LinkedIn. There's lots of different ways that you can build your credentials, including case studies. These are very, very important ways that you need to be building your credentials and showcasing your product. And you'll notice there how it says credentials and quality. Your product quality will speak for itself. If somebody drinks or tastes or eats or goes in and experiences dealing with you one-on-one -on -one and they're not happy, that is a, a pure indicator of the quality of the service or the product that you provide. When someone tastes Crunchy Cottage Elderberry Syrup, they will hands down know the moment they take that, that is the best elderberry syrup they've ever tried in their entire life. Not only do they have the reviews to back it up, but we also have the product quality in itself. So your credentials is the quality of your product or your service, as well as what people are saying about it in video testimonials, written reviews on Google reviews, and anywhere that people are talking about your brand, even in in-person events, this is a really, really important piece of your brand. The ninth law of branding is the law of quality. Must have the highest quality product or service. I touched on this a little bit, but this is really important. I really wanna send this home with you. If you have the highest quality product, that doesn't come at the cheapest price. Now, you can be on the other side of the spectrum if you want, if you wanna do volume, and you're not worried about the quality of the product, but you're worried about the speed, or you're worried about getting more out at a time, whatever your product is, then the quality of your product is gonna be focused more on the speed of it, the speed of delivery. It's not always about the actual quality of the product itself, but of the service that you're supplying. So there are three things that we typically tell people. Quality, service, and price. If you're gonna be the most affordable, they can't expect the highest quality, but you can still have a good product. But if you have the fastest or the cheapest price out there and you're able to get into more people's hands, that is valuable to people. So just focus on that. Make sure that you're offering a quality service or product or both. If you can do both, then great. But you want to at least make sure that you have a high, high quality product. And even if you can't deliver it fast or if you don't have the cheapest price, then you can flip flop that and give it for the cheapest price, but you still have a good quality product. And that's what's going to help you stand out from everybody else. The 10th law is the law of extension. Line extensions are adding other products and services to your lineup. This is something I've touched on a little bit again with the elderberry syrup. A natural product, a direction to go for the immune support was something like a probiotic, which is a common one is the fire cider, Sweet Sunny's fire cider. That is a law of extension. That is an extension that we added to the business. My wife has recently also added another extension to the business with the anxiety. Your health is very, very important. And so your mental health and having anxiety will keep you from living the life that you want. So she was able to add not just an immune support product, but now she's adding some mental health stuff with anxiety and sleep. Without a good night's sleep and with bad anxiety, you're gonna struggle. And so she wanted to create some, law, some line extensions to her product that took it beyond just the immune support. And so she's now kind of growing her product and growing her service, and I don't think she'll grow past that, but it's really important that you consider if you're doing graphic design or if you're doing um, web design, you can add a line extension like business card design, print design, vehicle graphics. There's all types of extensions that you can add to your business that are going to end up serving your customers at a higher level. When I first started my business doing printing, I started by doing graphic design and printing, and that was it. That was the only two things I did. And then as more people came in, they started saying, I need signs, I need vehicle graphics, and we added those lines in. And then next thing you know, they said, well, I need to help my business online because online is becoming important. And then we added web design. These are called line extensions and something that you should be considering adding to your business as well. If you want to make more money and serve more people. The 11th law, and this is a big one. This is probably the one that I've had to work on the hardest, and that's the law of consistency. Speaking about these videos that I do here on YouTube alone. The more you show up, the more consistent you are, the more value that you bring day after day, week after year, there's a, there's a saying is done is better than perfect. If you look at my first video that I did here on YouTube to my video now or any of my training videos that I've done to my video now, you'll see that I've improved over time. Once you get to 100, 200, 300 videos, you'll start to see that difference. It's just like working out in the gym. If you show up every day and you show up for a week every day, you're not gonna see huge results. But if you show up every day for 365 days, you're gonna start to see huge results. Now, if you do that for year after year, that consistency is gonna help you improve your skills and improve how the customers see you and your brand overall. The 12th law is the law of sub-brands. 
creating an additional brand. So we did this ourselves on the graphic design side because we were having so much success on LinkedIn, we decided we wanted to create a sub brand. And so we've done a bunch of different sub brands now that we have, but we have a lot of clients that were also getting websites from us. And as part of that website process, they needed a domain name. So this is why we built Adrian Domain. So we have Adrian Graphics, Adrian Graphics and Marketing, Adrian Agency, Adrian Domains. This was a natural extension of the Adrian Graphics and Marketing brand because we could make some extra money on the domain names and hosting. And that's what we've been doing. So I want to encourage you to start working on creating other sub brands underneath your main brand. Don't just focus on just graphic design or just web design. There are areas where you can make more money by creating a sub brand from your main brand. The 13th law is the law of siblings and creating a family of brands. So we have a sibling brand and that brand is called leadbutler.io. People saw us having a lot of success and we were seeing a lot of success on LinkedIn. So we decided to create a tool that was specifically designed for LinkedIn called Lead Butler and Lead Butler Connect. And so now we've started to develop other brands outside of the Adrian Graphics and Marketing brand, Adrian Domains, that would allow us to have other properties that we could build and other services that we could offer to our clients that weren't connected to our main brand. And so we've got multiple brands now. We've even got home improvement companies we have stakes and ownerships in. And that is what you can do as well. If you're really, really good at marketing or you're really, really good at graphic design and you learn how to do the marketing side, then you can start to get equity and ownership in other companies and add those as part of your family of brands. This is a really important piece. You see big companies, Johnson & Johnson, and all these other companies actually creating that Coca-Cola is probably one of the biggest. They have a ton of sub brands and sibling brands under them and uh, from energy drinks like Monster. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. So I want you to consider making sub brands and also having some family brands. The 14th law of branding is the law of borders. This is a really big area. Most people just focus on their backyard and that's really important to do in the beginning. You want to own your own backyard. But as you own your backyard, you wanna start expanding into other geographical areas. For example, we're starting to move into Texas, we're starting to move into Oklahoma, where I have some of my team at, we're starting to move into the East Coast a little bit. We're not just reaching into our local backyard, but we're moving into other geographical regions and even outside of the country. We have clients now that are in China that we're doing work for, and so you can start to expand and grow your brand into other parts of the country. The 15th law of branding is the law of shape. Now this specifically applies to more logo design than anything else, but the law of shape is very, very important. Every shape has some sort of meaning and representation behind it. And so whatever logo design or brand identity design you create, whatever shapes you're using, are gonna convey some sort of a message. A triangle is a very strong message. If you flip it upside down, now all of a sudden it's a funnel, there's different meanings behind different shapes. A circle is also a very strong shape, well-rounded, you have the square. So all these different shapes are gonna have different meanings, even like a rectangle. So you wanna be very specific about the shapes that you pick for your branding, for your messaging, and for your logo design. And you want your logo and you want your brand to be clean, memorable, and applicable. These are the three big things you need to be taking into consideration is clean, memorable, and applicable. The logo needs to be simple, be recognizable and memorable, and it needs to be applicable to the industry that you have. If you're doing something along the lines of um, selling wheels and tires, you're not going to use a triangle for your logo, right? You're not going to use a rectangle or a square. You're probably going to want to use some sort of a circle. That's just an example. The 16th law of branding is the law of color. And a lot of people miss this, especially graphic designers. They just go along with what the customer wants. Oh, I like blue, so let's just pick blue. But colors have meanings. Every color represents a specific category. I picked my colors very strategically. The color that I use is actually a specific Pantone color that I've picked out, and I use that because it has a richness, it has a sense of uh, vibrance, it has a sense of passion and energy. I picked that for a specific reason. White represents uh, a purity, blue represents valor, Every color has a psychology and has a meaning behind it. That's why McDonald's uses red and yellow because those are colors that make you hungry. So you wanna make sure that you're picking colors strategically and when you're doing your branding, this is a very, very important piece that you do not want to miss. If you're gonna use black and white, then that's gonna come across as minimalist and elegant. The 17th law of branding is the law of the name, keeping it short, unique, and meaningful. 
The name of your business is very important. It's an important decision to make when you're dealing with your company. You don't want something that's long, like all pressure power cleaning pros of America. You want to make sure you focus on something short, like Crunchy Cottage or Level One or Adrian Graphics. I even added the and marketing because I wanted people to know what we do. But a name is a very important piece of the business and the shorter you can get, the more memorable it's gonna be. That's why you have companies like Home Depot or Lyft or Uber. So focus on creating a name that's short, memorable and unique, but you don't wanna make it too unique. There are a lot of companies that are going and spelling like Phoenix and they spell it F-E-N-I-X-Y and all these crazy characters and names. You don't want to get too creative and too unique because then it's going to be hard for people to find or spell. So try not to do that too much. That's been a common thing in the last decade or so of companies using funny spellings for their names like Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. I'm sure you've heard of that or Lyft, L-Y-F-T. But you can do that if you have a short name, but the longer you get and the more creative you try to get with coming up with funny characters in your name, it's going to be harder for people to find you. So keep it short, keep it unique and make it meaningful. The 18th law of branding is the law of the generic. The generic can be doomed to failure, so find a non-generic name. Something like A plus plumbing is not a unique name that's very, very generic and it's not gonna stand out from the crowd. A name like Crunchy Cottage is incredibly unique. One of the things I did with my company is I originally incorporated myself. So that's why it was Adrian Graphics. I never intended it to be a big public facing brand, but because people liked me, I gave them a good experience and I provided an amazing service and end quality product. I was able to build an identity and a brand around my personal name. And that's why I've been able to create the sub brands like Adrian Domains and Adrian Agency off of that because I've built a really good reputation. So find a name that's not generic, find something that's memorable and personal to you, something that people will recognize and it'll stand out from the crowd. I can't tell, tell you how many all Americans or A plus or elite companies that they use that name elite and things like that. So don't use a generic name, find something that's specific and unique to you. The 19th law of branding is the law of company, separating your company from your brand name. You're probably wondering what this is, and this is a really important one. So my company name is not Adrian Graphics and Marketing. My company name is actually Adrian Graphics LLC. And as you continue to grow and you build a bigger business and a bigger brand, a lot of companies like Google, for instance, the main company that owns Google is not Google. It's called Alphabet. So you want to make sure that if you're going to build a big business and you're going to have multiple sub brands and family of brands, that you actually have a company name that's separate from your brand name. This is really important. A lot of large companies do this, and this is something that you want to consider doing with your brand if you plan on taking this huge uh, and someday exiting that brand, making sure that you have a holding company that actually owns the main brand name that the public sees. The 20th law of branding is the law of change. Everything changes and nothing stays the same forever. Brands are evolving. If you don't evolve and you don't adapt, you end up like Blockbuster or Redbox. You have to evolve, you have to change. This is really important to understand because the company and the landscape with the online world growing the way it is, is changing every single day. And so you need to be staying on the cutting edge of things and be aware of the changes that are happening to your industry and not just stand against them. It's okay to do that sometimes on specific areas. When it comes to technology, this is an area that you're probably gonna to wanna to go along with. Technology is advancing very quickly and it's hard to keep up with, but it's important that you do because technology is gonna move and so are the future generations with it. So, so you don't lose your customer base and become obsolete, you really need to understand that the law of change is inevitable and you need to adapt and evolve with it. The last law of branding is the law of mortalities. All brands will die and need to be reinvented. There are dozens and dozens of examples of companies that have done that over the years. Bonnie Plumbing is a very good example of that. After a certain amount of time when that company was acquired, the face of Mark and Candace just was no longer going to work. So they needed to rebrand the entire company because it was owned by new people and Mark and Candace were no longer part of that. Just like if I were to sell my company, Adrian Graphics, they would have to rebrand and make it less about me and more about the team or the people or what they're doing as a company differently once they buy it. So it's, it's really important that you understand that all brands have a mortality rate and if you don't evolve and change and, and make them better over time that they will die. And that's the last thing that you want to do after putting all your hard work into something. Can you imagine the people that started Toys R Us or Blockbuster 
having to give up their brand because they decided to be stubborn and not evolve and change with the times and not reinvent themselves, they totally could have reinvented themselves. Blockbuster is a really great example of that. And you need to reinvent yourself with all the technology and things that are happening. So those are the 21 laws of branding. These are very, very important for you to actually take into consideration when building your brand and when you're building brands for other people. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you found this valuable and hit the like button. Also, introduce yourself. Let me know who you are because I want to get to know you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.